François Villon, born in Paris in 1431 and disappeared from view in 1463, is the best-known French poet of the late Middle Ages. An heir du well who was involved in criminal behavior and had multiple encounters with law enforcement authorities. Villon wrote about some of these experiences in his poems. Biography Berthe Villon was born in Paris in 1431. One source gives the date as April 19, 1432, O.S. April 1, 1431. Early life villain's real name may have been François de Montcorbier or François des Lodges. Both of these names appear in official documents drawn up in Villain's lifetime. In his own work, however, Villon is the only name the poet used, and he mentions it frequently in his work. His two collections of poems, especially Le Testament, have traditionally been read as if they were autobiographical. Other details of his life are known from court or other civil documents. From what the poems tell us, it appears that Villon was born in poverty and raised by a foster father, but that his mother was still living when her son was 30 years old. The surname, Villon, the poet tells us, is the name he adopted from his foster father, Guillaume de Villon, chaplain in the Collegiate Church of St. Benoît la Bétournée, and a professor of canon law, who took Villon into his house. Student life Villon became a student in arts, perhaps at about 12 years of age. He received a bachelor's degree from the University of Paris in 1449 and a master's degree in 1452. Between this year and 1455, nothing is known of his activities. As the author of the 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica article writes, attempts have been made, in the usual fashion of conjectural biography to fill up the gap with what a young graduate of bohemian tendencies would, could, or might have done. But they are mainly futile, alleged criminal activities on 5 June 1455. The first major recorded incident of his life occurred. In the company of a priest named Giles and a girl named Isabeau, he met, in the Rue Saint-Jacques, a Breton, Jean Le Hardy, a master of arts who was also with a priest, Philippe Chermoyer. A scuffle broke out, daggers were drawn in Sermes, who was accused of having threatened and attacked Villon and drawn the first blood. Not only received a dagger thrust in return, but a blow from a stone, which struck him down. He died of his wounds. Villon fled, and was sentenced to banishment, a sentence which was remitted in January 1456 by a pardon from King Charles VII after he received the second of two petitions which made the claim that Sermoise had forgiven Villon before he died. Two different versions of the formal pardon exist. In one, the culprit is identified as François des Lodges, Autrement dit Villon. In the other as François de Montcorbier, he is also said to have named himself to the Baba surgeon who dressed his wounds as Michel Mouton. The documents of this affair at least confirmed the date of his birth by presenting him as 26 years old or thereabouts. Around Christmas 1456, the chapel of the College de Navarre was broken open and 500 gold crowns stolen. Villon was involved in the robbery and many scholars believe that he fled from Paris soon afterward and that this is when he composed what is now known as the Petit Testament or Lay. The robbery was not discovered until March of the next year, and it was not until May that the police came on the track of a gang of student robbers. Owing to the indiscretion of one of them, Guy Tabary, a year more passed, when Tabary, after being arrested, turned King's evidence and accused the absent Villon of being the ringleader, and of having gone to Angers, partly at least, to arrange similar burglaries there. Villon, for either this or another crime, was sentenced to banishment. He did not attempt to return to Paris. For four years, he was a wanderer. He may have been, as his friends Regnier de Montigny and Colin des were, a member of a wandering gang of thieves. Le Testament. 1461 The next date for which there are recorded whereabouts for Villon is the summer of 1461. Villon wrote that he spent that summer in the bishops. 
prison at Meng Sur Loire. His crime is not known, but in Le Testament dated that year he invades bitterly against Bishop Thibode Rossini, who held the See of Orleans. Villon may have been released as part of a general jail delivery at the accession of King Louis XI and became a free man again on 2 October 1461. In 1461, he wrote his most famous work, Le Testament. In the autumn of 1462, he was once more living in the cloisters of Saint Benoit and in November, he was imprisoned for theft in the fortress that stood at what is now Place du Châtelet in Paris. In default of evidence, the old charge of burgling the College of Navarre was revived, and no royal pardon arrived to counter the demand for restitution. Bail was accepted, however, Villain fell promptly into a street quarrel. He was arrested, tortured and condemned to be hanged, but the sentence was commuted to banishment by the Parliament on 5 January 1463. Villain's fate after January 1463 is unknown. Rabelais retells two stories about him which are usually dismissed as without any basis in fact. Anthony Bonner speculated the poet, as he left Paris, was broken in health and spirit, Bonner writes further. He might have died on a mat of straw in some cheap tavern, or in a cold. We will probably never know. Works. Introduction Villon was a great innovator in terms of the themes of poetry and, through these themes, a great renovator of the forms. He understood perfectly the medieval courtly ideal, but he often chose to write against the grain, reversing the values and celebrating the low lives destined for the gallios, falling happily into parody or lewd jokes, and constantly innovating in his diction and vocabulary. A few minor poems make extensive use of Parisian thieves' slang. Still villains' verse is mostly about his own life, a record of poverty, trouble, and trial which was certainly shared by his poems or intended audience. Le Testament in 1461, at the age of 30, Villon composed the longer work which came to be known as Le Grand Testament. This has generally been judged Villon's greatest work, and there is evidence in the work itself that Villon felt the same. Besides Le Lay and Le Grand Testament, surviving works of Villon include 16 shorter poems, varying from the serious to the light-hearted, and 11 poems in thieves' jargon, which were attributed to Villon from a very early time, but which many scholars now believe to be the work of other poets imitating Villon. Mysteries in Villon Villon's poems are sprinkled with mysteries and hidden jokes. They are peppered with the slang of the time and the underworld subculture in which Villon moved, replete with private jokes, and full of the names of real people from medieval Paris. Translations Complete works Recent translations A new English translation by David Georgie came out in 2013. The book also includes Villain's French printed across from the English, and notes in the back provide a wealth of information about the poems and about medieval Paris. More than any translation, Georges emphasizes Villain's famous gallows humor, dot his word play, jokes, and puns. For the complete works, another option is Barbara Sargent Bohr's very literal translation which also includes 11 poems long attributed to Villon but possibly the work of a medieval imitator. Complete works, older translations A translation by the American poet Galway Kinnell contains most of Villon's works but lacks the shorter poems. Peter Dale's ingenious verse translation follows the poet's rhyme scheme faithfully, though the necessity of finding rhymes requires him to frequently stray from literal faithfulness. Other fine translations include one by Anthony Bonner, published in 1960, and another by John Heron Lepper, from 1926. One drawback common to these English older translations is that they are all based on old editions of Illand's texts. That is, the French text that they translate is a text established by scholars some 80 years ago. Where are the snows of yesteryear? The refrain, where are the snows of yesteryear, is one of the most famous lines of translated poetry in the English-speaking world. 
It comes from the Ballad of Dead Ladies, Dante Gabriel Rossetti's translation of Villain's Ballad des Dames de Temps Jadis, where the line is, Mais au sont les neiges d'Antan, selected works a very loose but lively English takeoff on a scattered selection of villain poems was made by Stephen Rodefer in 1976, under the pen name Jean Calais. Translations of three villain poems were made in 1867 by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Translations of three other poems by Villon, plus translations of two into rhyming cant by William Ernest Henley can be read on Anthony Weir's website. Klaus Kinski, the German actor, was an admirer of Villon and performed his work many times. There are recordings of Kinski reciting Villon on CD and vinyl. Critical Views Villain's poems enjoyed substantial popularity in the decades after they were written. In 1489, a printed volume of his poems was published by Pierre Levet. This edition was almost immediately followed by several others. In 1533, poet and humanist scholar Clement Marot published an important edition, in which he recognized Villon as one of the most important poets in French literature and sought to correct mistakes that had been introduced to the poetry by earlier and less careful printers. The most commonly featured motifs that can be found in Villain's poetry are Carpe Diem, Ubi Sunt, Memento Mori, and Dance Macabre, Adaptations and Tributes. In 1960, the Greek artist Nunda dedicated an entire one-man art show to François Villon with the support of André Malraux. This took place under the arches of the Pont Neuf and was dominated by a gigantic 10-meter canvas entitled Homage of Villon depicting the poet at a banquet table with his concubines. See also Ezra Pound's musical setting of Villain's Le Testament opera as a work of literary criticism concerning the relationship of words and music.